Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about false accusations from a mother's perspective. The accusation does not need to go to the authorities or the courts to destroy the lives of the person accused or their families. We know that false accusations are used as a weapon, be it through divorce proceedings, often encouraged by lawyers, and often too in regret sex, which is what I will be talking about today. I had warned my teens about sex without consent before they were even interested in sex. My son knew. When he was 15, a month before he turned 16, during lockdown, we were at home. I was working. His friend, let's call her P, came to visit. As usual, they went down to his room, and as usual, when she left, P hugged me and said goodbye. Nothing was different. Two days later, P posted in their friends group that my son had sexually assaulted her. Sexually assaulted sounds like rape to anyone who hears it. It was late at night when my son came into my room. I was already in bed. It's a night we both will never forget. He told me of the accusation, and I asked him to go through the day step by step. They'd had drinks, non-alcoholic, and then they'd started making out, which included kissing and touching outside the clothing. They had stopped, chatted, and then they had continued. Not once did she say stop or I don't like this, and of course he was fumbling as he was inexperienced. The allegation was made and she was immediately believed. The first thing that happened was everyone blocked my son from all communication. He was cancelled. When he tried connecting with his closest friends, they told him they didn't want to be friends with him anymore. His 16th birthday was spent with just our family. We had, had held parties for his friend's 16th, and now no one wanted to be near him. I had him on suicide watch. My outdoor son would not leave his room. He wouldn't eat. He hid away. It felt like someone had died in our family. Nobody wanted to talk to me about this, even to this day. If I bring it up, there is just silence. We were excluded and isolated. Two to three months later, I saw P, and she was with my son's ex-friends, and I approached them. She asked me how I was, like nothing had happened. Obviously, she had completely forgotten about what she had said and the impact it had had on my son. I told her that my son was devastated on the allegation and that I wanted to have a meeting with her mother and that I was going to make it happen. I hadn't even got to the car and P started messaging me. She asked me to not tell her mother and that nothing had happened. She had over-exaggerated her discomfort. She redacted her allegation and I had it all on WhatsApp. The reason behind the allegation I finally found out later was that P had had a crush on my son's best friend. She didn't want to admit that she had made up with my son as that would make her look bad. So she created a story that she hadn't wanted to be touched and that she had been sexually assaulted. An allegation does not need to go to the courts to destroy the person accused and their families. Mothers are unaware of how vulnerable our young men are. False accusations is a weapon. No amount of consent can change the story as she will always be believed. I've been documenting false ac accusations and allegations and one thing everyone needs to know, you cannot unstick a label. The community will never forget what was said. It will always be associated to that person that's been accused even if the allegation is redacted. So what do we do? We share stories like mine, we offer support to other families and we protect our sons. Thank you.